Don't you hate it when that happens to you? When it does, you need this, and this, and this. When it happens to me, I always know where to go. When you've got professionals on your side, your problems don't stand a chance. What are you waiting for? Contact them today and let them take care of your problems. Don't you hate it when that happens to you? When it does, you need this, and this, and this. When it happens to me, I always know where to go. When you've got professionals on your side, your problems don't stand a chance. What are you waiting for? Contact them today and let them take care of your problems. Welcome to Undaunted, bringing into the news on Touch Stories. I am Oni Opala. Let's begin. History made. Augustine Ngomjoa's house restored. Dr. Winnie Lobati becomes first speaker of the Southern Cameroon's Ambazonian Interim House of Representatives. Biden's nine unscripted words could impact the war in Ukraine. Did the president's comments dangerously escalate already high tension in the worst confrontation between the West and the Russia in decades? In a dimensional approach, the president is doing what he knows best. One major step ahead with the Swiss-led process restored the Augustin Ngomjua's house over the weekend and he is restructuring the Ambazonia Restoration Forces to enhance a more than 2021 ground game. Before we even get into that, let's get the prime headlines. <laughs> Prime headlines. Biden's nine unscripted words could impact the war in Ukraine. Ambazonia takes one giant step ahead of the liberation movement. The interim House of Representatives restored. Former Secretary General, Honorable Dr. Winnie Lobati of the defunct Restoration Council becomes the first speaker of the interim House of Representatives. For protests rape and murder saga of the Ambazonian refugee in Bafusan last week allegedly apprehended by the police. After ASSC2, President Sato declares, time for action. Victims of war, IDPs of Amazonia continue to suffer in IDP camps. Refocusing and restructuring of the Amazonian Restoration Forces promises brighter days ahead. Cameroon head coach Rigo Batson has provided details of Vincent Abubakar's injury after loss on Friday against Algeria. President Biden, speaking at the Royal Castle in Walsh on Saturday, had a speech which was intended to highlight your support for East European allies. But the president veered off script. Do you think that President Biden's high-stakes speech on Saturday was crafted with the intent of throwing the full weight of the United States behind East European allies? Just nine unscripted words put an already jutting word on the edge again. 
First, Joe Biden's suggestion in Poland on Saturday that Vladimir Putin's onslaught on Ukraine should disqualify him from proper triggered an international political storm, the CNN reports. Back in Washington on Sunday evening, Biden told reporters that he was not calling for a regime change in Russia, echoing a message spread out multiple times by his subordinates even before he had returned to the U.S. But the global reverberations from the remarks left the administration facing grave questions. Some are strategic and could impact the future course of the war and so far elusive hopes for a ceasefire. Others are political and related to Biden standing at home amidst a torrent of Republican criticism and internationally as it seeks to keep the Western coalition together. It would appear that the European diplomatic tour could be an addition of more salt to the injury. Stay smart. What do you think? Only not exactly. But I think Biden hasn't really done well in diplomacy lately. In relation to his scripted words, I must attest that the stakes are high. But even before we calculate the damages that may cause, there are a good number of questions that are demanding four answers. One, did the president's comments dangerously escalate already high tensions in the worst confrontation between the West and Russia in decades? Two, has Biden shaken international confidence in his so far strong leadership in bringing the NATO alliance together in a united front against Moscow? And will Putin be able to exploit this quiet over Biden's comments in European capitals? Will the notion that Biden hopes to topple Putin, even if the U.S. says it's not true, harden the embattled Russian leader's resolve against negotiations or cause him to further escalate an already merciless war against civilians? Has Biden now stinging rhetoric about Putin effectively ruled out any future direct diplomacy or meetings between the world's top nuclear powers? And could it endanger global peace if they can communicate in a future crisis that threatens humanity? Or will Biden's human reaction to spending time with Ukrainian refugees soon be overtaken by the daily unfolding horror of the war or come to be seen as a strong moral stand that changed the way the world views the Russian leader? After all, ex-president Ronald Reagan's call for then-Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev to tear down this wall in Berlin was initially opposed by some of his own aides as too provocative. And finally, since Moscow already sees extraordinarily tough Western sanctions as economic warfare, and given Putin's deeply conspiratorial view of the West and its role in vanquishing the Soviet Union, can a few loose presidential words that rile up everyone in Washington really make things any worse? It was clear from the speed with which administration officials walked to clarify Biden's remark that they knew it could be a big problem that could potentially put an around European geopolitical showdown much worse. In a job, not in his scripted remarks, Biden said, and I quote, for God's sake, this man cannot remain in power. In a reference to Putin, a White House official said Biden meant that Putin cannot be allowed to exercise power over his neighbors or the region and said Biden wasn't referring to the regime change. Secretary of State Antony Blinken was even more categorical during a trip to Jerusalem on Sunday. He said, in his words, we do not have a strategy of regime change in Russia or anywhere else for that matter. Blinken said, in this case, as it is in any case, it is up to the people of the country in question. He says it is up to the Russian people. Biden's comment about the Russian leader's tenure on power was not the only striking rhetoric of his star. After meeting refugees on Saturday, Biden called Putin a butcher. Previously, Biden had called him a thug and a murderous dictator, and the script from which he departed to make the new notorious remark was in itself hawkish, previewing what Biden said was a long struggle, which sounded like a new Cold War. We believe you will be able to determine for yourself in the days ahead whether Biden's meeting with NATO and European leaders has done more harm than good to the West. We will surely bring you the updates.
During the AFSC2, some decisions were taken. These decisions were called resolutions. But we all know that actions and resolutions without implementation is fruitless. And because Ambazonia has an action inspired precedent, some of the resolutions are implemented already, one of which is the reconstitution and inauguration of the legislative arm of the interim government. Star Smart followed up the ceremony and has more detail. Indeed, history made. Augustine Ngomju was house restored. Dr. Winnie Lobati becomes first speaker of the Southern Cameroon's Ambazonia Interim House of Representatives. The event, which started at 8 p.m. Amber time last Saturday, March 26, 2022, and was organized virtually, was largely attended by Ambazonians home and abroad. It lasted for more than 10 hours into the next morning and outcomes were so exciting that Ambazonians thought it should never end. We received messages of participants, particularly from the home front, attesting to this effect. It was generally described as a solemn occasion. What is there to say? Our comrade of the newsroom from the home front, interim government watchmen, had this succinct expose. The people of Ambazonia finally conclude the reconstitution and restoration of their legislative arm of the interim government. The all taken ceremony saw over 60 representatives voted from over 60 local government areas from the 13 counties of Ambazonia pledging to uphold the supreme law of the land as they pushed towards the final and complete takeover of the territory from the invading forces of La Republic du Cameroon and France. It should be noted that this House of Reps was hijacked and abolished by La Republic du Cameroon and France in the days of PM Augustin Unjunjua, reasons why the restored house has been styled the Jewer's House. The oppressed and subjugated indigenous people, the Southern Cameroons, Ambazonia, last Saturday, 26 March 2022, hit a milestone in actualizing the amber dream of a free and independent homeland. The governmental structures of the Southern Cameroon's Ambazonia are now complete under the charismatic leadership of His Excellency President Samuel Ikome Sako. President Sako was democratically voted by the Ambazonian people few months after the abduction of his predecessor, His Excellency Sesaku Ayuk Tabe Julius, by La Republic du Cameroon and France in connivance with Nigeria. The latter now serves a life jail slammed on him by the military tribunal of La Republic du Cameroon. Though the world has turned a blind eye to the genocide and perpetual subjugation of Ambazonians, the people have resolved to persecute the struggle for Ambazonia to its logical. Doctor of pharmacy, mother, wife, philanthropist, freedom fighter, and human rights activist, Dr. Winnie Lobati, in pursuit of freedom and service, for her people rises at the helm of the legislative arm of the Ambazonia interim government. It was at exactly 3.30 a.m. amber time, over eight hours into the inauguration ceremony that she was presented to the crowd. It is worthy to highlight that many Ambazonians saw Dr. Winnie Lobati as the light amidst the darkness that invaded the former, the defunct Restoration Council. I would say she is a red gem. But you may wish to know more. Who is Winnie Lobati? Where is she coming from? What can she offer Ambazonians at a time such as this? Our correspondent, Star Smart, may just have the answers. Talk to us, please. Star. The international community woke up to the news of the reconstituted and restored House of Reps and subsequent election of the Speaker of the House for Southern Cameroon, Ambazonia. After the inauguration of the House on Saturday, 26th of March, 2022, the urgency of their job necessitated a first ordinary session to put in the leaders of the House. From a highly contested and heated electoral process, members of the House voted Dr. Winnie Lobati as the first Speaker of the House. Pundits and political analysts have asked the following questions. Who is Winnie Lobati? Where is she coming from? 
What can she offer at a time such as this when the world has turned a blind eye to the genocide and perpetual subjugation of Amazonians by La Republic de Cameroon and France? At a time when some Amazonians have collected huge sums of dollars from oppressors and have turned their guns against the Amazonia government. Permit me to just give a tip of the iceberg of who the Lionheart Lady is. Honorable Dr. Winnie Labati is a seasoned intellectual holding a PhD degree in pharmacy. She is a pharmacist par excellence. Honorable Dr. Winnie hails from the Momo County, Menomo local government area. She served as Secretary General in the Defunct Restoration Council. Her good sense of objectivity, constitutionality, and legality wouldn't allow her to take it when Mr. Elvis Kometa displayed a high level of buffoonery and lack of mastery of his rights and limitations as the former chair of that archaic house. Dr. Winnie stood for what Ambazonia believed in, truth and justice. Honorable Dr. Winnie has been actively involved in the struggle for Ambazonia for a very long time, putting her intellectual and financial resources. Honorable Dr. Winnie Labati has not only got a spicy and juicy political career, she is a fulfilled housewife, outstanding mother, and a committed king's lady to family and friends. Just to add one more, she is a philanthropist, human rights activist, and freedom fighter with a daring spirit unimaginable. Ambazonians have received her with so much excitement and the concluding statement of her maiden address Sunday morning, inviting the president for the first session in the House and demanding that he comes with the Washington Conference resolutions for resolutions. Inviting the president for the first session in the House and demanding that he comes with the Washington Conference resolutions for the House to start work immediately only tells you Ambazonia can hope for brighter days ahead. Star Smart reporting for Undaunted ABC Amber News. That was amazing, Star Smart. Others who took specific responsibilities in the interim house of representatives were Dr. Winnie Lobati, speaker from Menomo local government around Momo County, Mr. Daniel Esowe, deputy speaker from Koya local government area Meme County, Secretary Ambrose Etinje, Secretary General from Ingi local government area Momo County, and Mr. Ernest Timgi, Deputy Secretary General from Dong Local Government Area, Boyle County. It is as well important to note that at least 34 representatives were welcomed into the House. On other issues of national concern, French Cameroon continues her dirty politics. Playing in politics with the dead is in your men. We should be able to allow the dead to rest in peace. Some days ago, we got you a report about an Ambazonian student teacher that was raped and killed. Why so much controversy surrounding these particular incidents? Are there some cover-ups we should uncover? Are there still some skeletons we should pick out of the cupboard? As a follow up on the murder story of the Ambazonia refugee in Bafosan, Cameroon, fake media is reporting that the suspect of the alleged rape and subsequent murder of the Ambazonia refugee in Bafosan of neighboring La Republic de Cameroon has been taken into custody by the security forces. While the Cameroon government hopes to use this propaganda report to shift the blame and to establish some form of closure, Ambazonians are saying that this act could just be one of their cover-up to thwart public opinion. Observers say the chances are high that the student teacher was most probably a victim of targeted killing. Why? Because she is simply an Ambazonian. According to French Cameroon proxies and media, Ngavi Fifth was attacked in her house, raped and murdered about a fifth ago in Bafosan. The fact is... There are no concrete leads to this side of the story. Even though of the purported suspect is yet unknown. This smells like fraud, like one of La Republic de Cameroon's obvious schemes, tactics to hide their tricks. 
while our team is keeping a close watch. The message of our president was loud and clear, full of wisdom, revelations, and lessons to take home by coup plotters and their partners in crime. President Sacco asked an important question, which I would like you to pause for a while and think about. Here is it. Why are coup plotters proposing federation to Ambazonians, which has not been suggested by the colonists as the way forward? President Sacco says the response to all coup plotters is precise and robust, emphasizing that every dime stolen, illegally siphoned by any coup plotter, shall be restored and is corporately taken care of under the wire fraud laws and the cyber laws of the United States of America. In his words, it says, I quote, I promise it will be as sure as men do sunrise. The president of the Federal Republic of Ambazonia, Dr. Samuel Ikome Sacco, has said that now is time for action, time to give, time to go down to work. The president was speaking during a heavily a third weekly scheduled up town hall Zoom meeting that held on Thursday, March 24, 2022. During this meeting, the president of the Federal Republic of Ambazonia, Dr. Sacco, was very categorical and straight to the point warning fence seaters of those holding the Yaoundé agenda either to toe the line now or never because the interim government he heads has only one way to boil. Nothing more, not a less. Emphatically, he maintained that there is no giving up, even if one's neck was cut off. Dr. Samuel Ikamesako acknowledged that Operation Lava Storm has proven its worth for the past two years, and this time it will be the final as Lava Storm 3 is expected to produce fireworks and make the last push to our cherished homeland. We must do our best. The president, in his words, said, and I quote again, we took the struggle from the, from the force of argument to the argument of force, from the shadows to the fall of international diplomacy. Amazonia liberation war has caused a lot of devastating effects on the homeland. This is as many homes properties have been burnt down by the colonial military, rendering survivors homeless and helpless. Our sisters and wives are raped and killed. Our brothers and fathers are intimidated and harassed. And our children, our children can't even get quality education. Just like President Sako has said, it's time for action. We must join hands together to get our homeland. While we look at the heartbreaking story of our brother, Munar Ndum Antoine, we must begin to factor a way to ensure that Ambazonians are safe 
at home. The plight of an IDP victim of colonial military excesses and armless Ambazonians, Mr. Mona Ndum Antoine, is from Ian Momo County, a carpenter by profession, married with children, and with operating his woodwork business in Bamenda, local government area, unperturbed. When all of a sudden the colonial military invaded his workshop one fateful day and set it ablaze, and he was left with nothing and was forced to start life afresh. With a family load, he decided to relocate to Douala, French Cameroon's economic capital, to see if he could make ends meet. Unfortunately for him, no sooner had he thought things were almost getting better, he was involved in the accident you see in the video that will be played shortly which has incapacitated him, bringing his situation from bad to worse, and he is in their need. Most Ambazonians who fled to French Cameroon are involved in menial jobs, petty trading, house helps, farming, prostitution, and many other jobs, all on very little income, but just fighting to survive. I would like you to just watch this amateur footage. My brothers and sisters, my name is uh, Mr. Muno Ndum Antoine. Come on from Northwest Momo Division, Nyen Village. So, due to um, uh, this anglophone crisis, I've been a woodworker, that's carpenter. I will do carpentry. So, due to this crisis, military and come burn my workshop. I think that I get them for the day, burn at all. I be there with no option than for come out for the day. So I take my madam and picking them. We we'll go for Duala. So can we show Duala now? I patch up with somebody. We help me. Same I begin the work. So I day for the day. I try the work. So I come on now. Same I go buy material one day for for do some furniture. As I go, go buy that material, I get accident between two camions. Now, by the grace of God, when I really see me at the top of now, because the accident will be very, very wide. The accident, now by the grace of God, we I survive that accident because the accident will be terrible. Now, between two camions, then one camion will climb for this my right leg, and the same way, I'll cut down. So, the another one will knock this foot. So all this time then, my family don't try. They don't rush from here to there. But see what they feel do. You know, this year, the iron this day for my foot, where they put them. The iron to this, for this very, for this place, they put iron inside here. So this one don't cost me a lot to an extent way. As I, all my brothers and sisters and today, all my don't move money. The small business where they be doing, and they don't move money so they all man day down. As I talk, as I deal with, as I talk with Tuna Vieso, I don't get no nothing. I don't get no place where I feel run to. Because there was a situation where it be very, very critical. The iron for this food, they just moves me for hospital because they say and say they be too much. They don't feel left me for hospital, me the bees and decline. So they say, I go find some person for house where so you go to wash the wound. So, as I did now, so I do everything on top of it. As I was say, as I return, I said, I'll be carpenter. I use this one then. So these two things, then when I want like, like stool, see me, my madam put me my stool. I use and put up or down. I check myself up. My madam put both for under her stool. So, you know, I'll be easy with me. I'll be run from Bamen. Who are the enemies of Ambazonia? How many enemies should Ambazonians be aware of? Ambazonians are dying and there must be a stop. Such a thanks to the incorruptible President Saka, who is working tirelessly to ensure we get to Boya soon. With the newly inaugurated House of Representatives, our people will know the truth and the right part to stand. Also, the Ambazonia Restoration Forces will have full confidence to protect their people. In a three-dimensional approach, the President is doing what he knows best. One major step ahead with the Swiss led process, he restored the Augustine Ngomdwa's House of Representatives over the weekend. And he is restructuring the Ambazonia Restoration Forces 
to enhance a more than 2021 ground game. Do you want to know more? Listen to Watchmen. We sincerely apologize for our inability to bring you that sound bite, which we will bring you in our subsequent bulletin. But now to sports. Cameroon head coach Rockbet Song has provided details of Vincent Abubakar's injury. FIFA on the 20 World Cup qualifier Nigeria trash Senegal to qualify for Costa Rica 2022. Christian Eriksen scores two minutes into his return to international football. Women's World Cup England beats Bangladesh to set up South Africa's semi final. Women's World Cup England beats Bangladesh to set up South Africa's semi finals. Gab Ellison has more detail. World Sports. Cameroon head coach Rigo Song has provided details of Vincent Abubakar's injury. Cameroon's main forward and top scorer at the 2021 Total Energies Afghan Vincent Abubakar lasted 45 minutes before making way for Leandra Kana Tawamba. Song in his post-match analysis provided details on why he replaced the goal poacher. Vincent Abubakar has a recurrent heel problem. The heavy nature of the pitch aggravated the pain. That's why we replaced him at the break to prevent a worst-case scenario. Song revealed before going on to give the duration of Abubakar's absence. We will see what happens in our next game, but we are sure he will be available to help the team. Cameroons are hoping to have a fully fit Abubakar that can create an impact in the return game, while their host Algeria has the lead they just need to protect to earn a fifth appearance at the FIFA World Cup. FIFA Under-20 World Cup Qualifiers Nigeria trusts Senegal to qualify for Costa Rica 2022. Nigeria has qualified for a record 10th FIFA Under-20 Women's World Cup in Costa Rica on Saturday after a 4-1 win over Senegal in Benin City. The All-West African final round fixture saw the Senegalese suffer a 3-1 first leg loss to the Nigerians thanks to a hat-trick from Flourish Sabastin in thighs. In the reverse tie, Sabastin netted a brace and a goal each from Esther Onyenezide and Joy Jerry ensured the Falconers earned a double over the young Terenga Lionesses, despite Ajindiaye's strike from the spot. A 7-2 aggregate win saw Nigeria confirm their 10th qualification to the global competition, where they twice emerged as vice-champions, Germany in 2010 and Canada in 2014, after clinching one of the two tickets as African representatives. On the other hand, the defeat marked the end of the road for Senegal in their fourth attempt at their maiden World Cup dream. Christian Eriksen scores two minutes into his return to international football. Christian Eriksen said he enjoyed a perfect return to international football as he scored two minutes after coming on for Denmark in their 4-1 friendly defeat by Netherlands. Eriksen, 30, was playing for his country for the first time since his cardiac arrest at Euro 2020 last June. The midfielder, who has seen join Premier League club Brentford, 
produce a terrific finish into the top corner. I was happy the ball came to me, said Ericsson. I thought it was a lovely finish and to start my international comeback like this is a perfect way. Ericsson could have had a second goal when he turned outside the area but his calling strike hit the post. Ericsson was coming on to win his 110th cap as a second half substitute. He received huge cheers from the crowd at the Johan Cruyff Arena in Amsterdam, home of his former club Ajax. Women's World Cup England beat Bangladesh to set up South Africa's semi-final. England will face South Africa in the semi-finals of the Women's World Cup after an efficient defeat of Bangladesh in Wellington. The 101 success at the Basin Reserve continue a strong resurgence from the defending champions who have won four successive matches after beginning the tournament with three straight losses. On a tired surface, England started with circumspection against a hard-working Bangladesh attack. At one stage, finding themselves 96-4, they were lifted to 234-6 by Sophia Dunkley, who made 67 with support from Amy Jones and Catherine Brunt. Bangladesh, playing the final match of their first World Cup, never showed any serious intent in the chase. Spinner Sophie Ecclestone and Charlie Dean took three wickets each as Bangladesh were dismissed for 134. England will play South Africa in the last four in Christchurch on Thursday a repeat of the meeting between the two teams at the same stage in 2017. Boxing Josh Warrington beats Kiko Martinez to regain IBF featherweight title with knockout win. Brighton Josh Warrington sensationally knocked out Spain's Kiko Martinez in the seventh round to become a two-time IBF champion in front of his loyal home fans. At first, Direct Arena in Leeds, the 31-year-old dropped the Spaniard in the first round before the fight was halted two minutes, 12 seconds into the seventh. The two fighters previously met in 2017, Warrington edging a close point decision, but this time the Leeds Warrior won in clinical fashion. It was Warrington's first win since October 2019 as he regained the title he held between 2018 and January 2021. He seemed to hurt his hand in the fight and was also looking to hospital with a suspected fractured jaw. Golf Qatar Masters Scotland's Ewan Ferguson wins World Tour event Ferguson 25 began the final round three shots of leaders Matthew Jordan and Andre Merong. A double bogey on the second dented his challenge but he played the final three holes in three under including an eagle on the 16th to secure the win. He finished on seven under, American Chase Hanna is shot behind in second. Ferguson became the third Scott to win the title after Andrew Coltat claimed victory in 1998 and two-time champion Paul Laurie who won in 1999 and 2012. I'm absolutely buzzing, Ferguson told BBC Scotland. It's the sweetest day of my life, never mind my golf career, I'm speechless, I can't put it into words, I can't wait to go home and see my family. Ferguson admitted pressure got to him when he blew a four-shot lead in the final round of the Kenyan Open earlier this month. But the 25-year-old used that experience to get himself over the line in what he described as brutal, blustery conditions. Gab Ellison on the Sports News. World Sports And with that sports report, we've come to the end of Undaunted tonight. But before we go, here is a recap of the major stories. Biden's nine unscripted words could impact the war in Ukraine. And Bazonia takes one giant step ahead of the liberation movement. The interim House of Representatives has been restored. Former Secretary General Honorable Dr. Winnie Lobati of the defunct Restoration Council has become the first speaker of the interim House of Representatives. Purported suspects of the rape and murder saga of the Ambazonia refugee in Bafusan last week has been apprehended by the police. After ASSC2, President Sackle has declared time for action. Victims of war IDPs of Ambazonia has continued to suffer in IDP camps. Refocusing and restructuring of the Ambazonia Restoration Forces 
is promising a better days ahead. And in sports, we told you that Cameroon head coach Robert Song has provided details of Vincent Abubakar's injury after loss on Friday against Algeria. And that was it for tonight and Daunted, bringing into the news on Talk Stories. I am Oni Opalabu, leave you with ABC Amber TV images. Thanks for watching. Don't you hate it when that happens to you? When it does, you need this, and this, and this. When it happens to me, I always know where to go. When you've got professionals on your side, your problems don't stand a chance. What are you waiting for? Contact them today and let them take care of your problems. Don't you hate it when that